Hi friends, today's lesson is module one, lesson 26. I barely got over to this computer to make this lesson because my, my kiddo and I were playing Candyland. Have you ever played Candyland? Oh my goodness, Candyland is so super duper fun. My favorite thing about Candyland is getting all the way through the path, all the way up to the top of the castle. Then of course I pretend that I get rewarded by eating all that candy. Now, our lesson today doesn't really end with candy, although let's all just all agree that doing math is a big treat. Um, we are going to use a path, just like you do in Candyland. Our learning goal says, I can use a number path to find an unknown part. Okay, so what's a number path? A number path is literally a path with numbers on it. <laughs> now, Candyland has colors, but a number path has numbers. You start at one, and then you count up as you walk down the path. You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You see how it goes in order? Now, the reason why we have our numbers on a path is because it keeps us organized. And as we've learned before, being organized in math is always helpful. It's just like a board game. You want to make sure all the players are in the right spot because you don't want anybody winning besides you. Okay, so how do I use this number path with math? Let me show you. So here's that gorgeous math tool, my number path. And say I had an addition problem. I had four plus something, that's my unknown, is equal to seven. I don't really know, four plus something. Um, I could use my good thinking, I could use my counting six or my five group cards, but you know what, I'm gonna use this number path. So I'm gonna start with the smallest number. I'm gonna start at four. And just like I did with my counting six, I'm gonna count on until I get to seven. Now the way you count to seven is after you circle the smallest number, you get to take little jumps with your pencil. So I'm going to take little jumps until I get all the way to seven. Now, the number path is organized and neat, so you want to make sure your jumps are too. So I'm going to say four, and then take jumps till I get to seven. Four, five, six, seven. Then I get to stop, because I reached it. Now all I have to do is count how many jumps I made. One, two, three. Oh, perfect. That means my unknown is three. Okay, do you see how I had to make sure that my jumps were nice and clean because I have to count those little humps of my jumps to make sure I know the unknown. That's what you need to do as well. Now, you know, our lesson yesterday showed us that addition and subtraction are kind of related because if I know four plus three equals seven, let me look and see, what if that was a subtraction problem? What if I said, four plus three equals seven, what if I said, what's seven minus four? Hmm, what does that equal? Well, I'm gonna start at four, just like I did before. And I'm gonna use counting on to get to seven. So I will circle four, and then I'm gonna count on until I get to seven. Four, five, six, seven. Again, all I have to do is use my jumps. One, two, three. Aha, the answer is three. Today we're gonna to use a mixture of what we know about addition and the number path and those good jumps to help us um, find the unknown parts and help us to subtract. So here we go. All right, so say I had the problem five minus one equals something. And I just had no idea. I'm gonna use a number path and I'm also gonna use some good thinking. I'm going to try to see if I can figure out the addition problem. So let's see, 5 minus 1 equals something, I don't know. What if I did 1 plus something equals 5? Oh yeah, perfect. Now I just need to start at 1 and then count on until I get to 5. Watch my good jumps. Count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, do you remember what I do now that I got to 5? Yeah, I'm going to count my jumps. Count my jumps with me. One, two, three, four. So that means one plus four is equal to five. And if one plus four is equal to five, then five minus one is also going to be equal to four. I could say five and go back one to get to four. Aha, that's perfect. 
because the difference between 1 and 5 are all these jumps. So the difference is 4. All right, let's try another one. What about, this one I had 7 minus 2. There's my number pad. All right, I want to use good thinking to try to turn that into addition sentence. What do you think? What addition sentence could we do? Perfect. That's a good idea. Yeah, I could say 2 plus something is equal to 5. All right, so what number am I going to circle? Where am I going to start on my number path? Yeah, totally. I'm going to start at 2, and I'm going to jump all the way up to... Perfect. 7. Here we go. 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven. Stop. All right, I made it. Am I done? No, of course not. I got to count my jumps. Count it with me. One, two, three, four, five. So the answer is five. Now that must mean, for my subtraction, seven minus two equals something. Well, look at all those jumps. That's the difference. And if the difference between two and seven were those five jumps, that means that five is my difference or the amount that I could take away. Wow, we are doing amazing, which is great because our learning goal says I can use a number path to find an unknown part. And we're using that number path in addition to our good thinking. All right, and the addition sentence that we know all about. Now for this one, you'll know that it's ending on a black screen. The reason for that is because I can't really give you a number path this way through the lesson. So you're going to have to go get your practice set from your teacher and you can practice doing your good work with the number path using the number path. Alright, so good luck today friend.